Hi, I'm your host, Carmen. I'm a preschool teacher, a certified life coach, and an ADHDer who was diagnosed later in life. I am my own advocate, so I decided to create this podcast to help people cope with, learn about this complex neurodevelopmental disorder, and feel an authentic sense of connection in this community. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, how's your week going? How are you doing? I say fall is approaching super fast. And I was thinking about this week's episode. I wrote two different episodes, half of them. And then I realized why I was doing that. And that was because I haven't done this episode yet. And this topic is very exciting for me. Because it's ADHD and women. I love talking about this because, well, (laughs) I'm a woman with the neurodevelopmental disorder of ADHD. And I'm proof of a lot of what I'm going to talk about today. (laughs) But first, I do want to clarify that the way I'm going to describe this ADHD presentation can also show up in males. It's just more prevalent in women, which is why the episode is named ADHD in Women. So, do boys get diagnosed with ADHD more than girls do? The answer is yes. According to the CDC, 12.9% of boys get diagnosed as to girls at 5.6%. When research shows it's not only a boy's disorder, this tells me that women are still being grossly underdiagnosed, misdiagnosed, unheard, and not understood. And uh, frankly, that gives me a lot of uncomfortable feelings, but I'll just move past that. We're going to go through this episode with those uncomfortable feelings. If you are a woman with ADHD and you've recently been diagnosed, I hope that this episode gives you some clarity, something to relate to, something to help you maybe not feel so alone um, because you're not the only one who has gone through basically gone through H-E double hockey sticks so that this doesn't get an explicit rating um, to get your diagnosis and get the treatment that works. So in my research, I have found kind of an overarching three big reasons that women are not diagnosed as much or as well as boys and men. So not soon enough or just not as much, like not at all. And those three things are societal and social norms for women specifically. The next one is the way that most girls present with ADHD. Notice I said most. Some males can present this way too. And the third thing is hormones and our cycle. (laughs) Yes, lovely. I know. Hey listener, have you subscribed to this show yet? If you're enjoying it, I suggest hitting the little subscribe button under the podcast main page so that when new episodes come out, they just pop up in your feed, just like the algorithms of Instagram and Facebook when you follow things. So if you like this podcast, go click that follow button. So, women in society are expected to be the planners, the organizers, the cleaners. We're the one that's supposed to schedule things, care for others, and, you know, make sure everyone else has been fed or has something to eat. If you have ADHD, you know that because of our inability to focus, plan, and use all of our executive functioning 
skills in the right way, um, doing the things I mentioned and remembering to also take care of yourself as well. Well, this leaves us with a messy house, half done projects, missed appointments, and possibly burnout from trying to possibly just mask your ADHD symptoms to attempt to fulfill society's expectations for women, which are grossly high in my opinion. But anyways, women are usually diagnosed later in life because our ADHD symptoms present internally instead of externally. So this means that males can also present internally instead of externally too. But like I said earlier, it's just more prevalent in women. If you pass in school and you don't really disrupt too much, you're overlooked and until like it affects your life in a big way, like your job or your relationships. So really quick, ADHD is a mental health condition that affects the ability to do some or all of these tasks. Managing impulses, sitting still, noting details, staying organized, breaking up big goals or tasks into smaller pieces or parts, remembering things, scheduling, planning, and emotional regulation. There are more and these are cited in the uh, notes of this episode as my sources. Please don't ever expect to actually have show notes from me. I write out my my episodes and the last thing I want to do is is type them out too. I would love to be so diverse to do that, but until I'm making enough money to have somebody type them out for me and edit them for me, this is what you get with my uh, little blog post. So, that was just a side note. So I'm going to be using a lot of my own experience here as I explain why women are misdiagnosed and missed until adulthood or overlooked altogether because a lot of it happened through my own diagnosis process. This is my friendly reminder that I am not a doctor. I am just a fellow ADHDer, teacher, and life coach. If you suspect that you have ADHD or some other mental illness, please seek help from a medical professional. As I always suggest, see a psychologist to get a full evaluation. Back to the show. So when you feel you have some type of mental health condition and you don't know much about it, I mean, you go to the doctor, right? Your primary care provider and you tell them that something's wrong. Like, that's what I did. This, I mean, you go to the doctor and you say, like, something's bothering me. I'm having trouble. At first, the regular doctors told me that my negative self-talk withdrawal from friends, and disinterest in activities that I used to enjoy were depression symptoms. When I now know, in reality, it was rejection sensitivity disorder, which is part of ADHD. That was um, my negative self-talk, which is also something else that's just a symptom or a negative outcome of ADHD. My quirks and social anxieties were... Uh, for not meeting like the societal standards kept me away from my friends and my disinterest in the activities that I enjoyed wasn't because I was like sad it was because I was overworking myself to like pass college and work full time while being undiagnosed and misdiagnosed so during that time I trialed three different antidepressants before I asked the doctor what else like it could be or we could try since The medications weren't working and were causing terrible, awful side effects. Like, unbearable. Like, 
One of them was I got so dizzy that I couldn't stand up. Another one of them I could not sleep. Uh, a different one actually gave me the black box warning of suicidal thoughts. And, you know, other ones just did, either didn't do anything or they made me feel tired or like a zombie. So after they diagnosed me with anxiety and panic on top of the depression and put me on something that made me feel so awful, I just stopped. And then I waited a while and then I went to a different office and demanded a full psychological evaluation. It was at, at this point in my life that I was about to um, be put on a needs improvement plan because my paperwork was so atrocious that I couldn't prove the work that I was doing in my job. So anyways, at this point, uh, I self-diagnosed myself and the evaluation did give me the answers that I needed. And I do have generalized anxiety disorder, situational panic, and situational or seasonal depression. But the disorder that stood out the most in my evaluation results were the ADHD. I'm in the 90th percentile. I can manage my anxiety. I can manage my depression. My ADHD is something I still struggle to manage to this day. So from then on, it was an uphill battle of finding the right medication to treat my ADHD and then strategically finding the right combo to help me with the three different disorders. Because when they're comorbid like this, they all tend to worsen as you get older. But I digress. This episode is not about medication, but I wanted to paint you a picture of what it can look like to go undiagnosed and misdiagnosed for so long. And I was diagnosed at the age of 24. A lot of women don't get diagnosed until they're over 30 or 40, and they're still being newly diagnosed at 50. Some, like, this is just insane to me because how is this not proof that women are just grossly un, undiagnosed and just being missed? <sighs> Anyways, some of the hallmark symptoms that show up internally for women can look like this. Our hyperactivity, instead of bouncing off of the walls like it looks when it's, like, extroverted, when it's in... Internal, it looks like hair twirling, nail biting, excessive talking, difficulty remaining seated for an extended amounts of time, restlessness, and the need to get up several times in the night. Also, trouble sleeping. Our impulsivity doesn't look like doing things that, like, hurts ourselves like running and jumping off of playground equipment but it more so looks like risky behavior as we get older like in drugs sex and alcohol um over buying over eating over drinking making big huge decisions without thinking them through saying yes before checking your schedule so people pleasing Impulsivity also causes a lot of things that fall under the emotional dysregulation part of our ADHD, but I will get to that because poor attention is next. Poor attention, when it's internalized, looks like being easily distracted, forgetful, making careless mistakes, losing things that are really necessary and losing them often like your keys three or four or five or ten times in a day. Inability to organize paperwork. Being daydreamy. Trouble creating and meeting goals. Trouble breaking things down into smaller tasks. Trouble paying attention during conversation. Emotional dysregulation, which is not in the DSM-5 as a symptom of ADHD, but the research that's being done on it shows that it's definitely part of it, men and women included. This looks like, internally, interrupting others when talking, a low frustration tolerance, meaning you get frustrated very easily and it shows, (laughs) 
Sensory sensitivity to noise, light, and sound. Like you can't think straight when it's too loud or there's flashing bright lights or too low of a light, you can't focus, or it's too loud. Or maybe you hate the silence, like that drives you bonkers. Anger outbursts can also look like crying intensely at things that don't seem as serious to typically developing brains. And our symptoms fluctuate with our cycles. That was number three, the hormone part. Literally, our symptoms just fluctuate with our cycles, medicine or not. That's just something else we get blessed with, I guess. <laughs> so what I've described above is about half of the ways that ADHD shows up in women in, and in an internalized way. Now I want you to really think about the self-worth of the person that I'm talking about that experiences this, these things. Think about the self-worth this person has for themselves because I'll bet that it's low. We are classified as dreamers, lazy, stupid, careless, spacey, ditzy, dumb, unorganized, and much, much more that I just really don't want to keep listing because I don't really feel like crying right now. <laughs> um, but those are the things that uh, we get classified under as women with this disorder, even when we are diagnosed sometimes. And when you think about the self-worth of that person, I'm going to tell you from some insight right now, it's no wonder that we all have depression and anxiety and rejection sensitivity because we've been rejected and we're depressed because we've been told so many times that we're dumb and ditzy and spacey that we believe it ourselves. Because important people like teachers and parents and aunts, uncles, family members, anybody, Lord help it, they didn't know any better. They didn't know. It's not their fault. But they said it. They told us. And it became a part of our self-worth. That's the work in this episode of ADHD in Women. Is to understand that you are not dumb. You are not ditzy. You are not stupid. You are not a dreamer, lazy, careless, spacey, or any of the other derogatory names or terms that have been thrown around. Because you, my friend, are a valuable human being, no matter how your ADHD presents itself. Because I bet you're creative, and I bet you are super empathetic. You're not careless. You love people. You just don't, we just have a hard time showing it in the right way. So I urge you, if you recognize any of these following things that I'm going to say, it might be a good idea to talk with your healthcare professional about what, what you're experiencing. And also, if you are diagnosed with ADHD, I invite you to head to my show notes to get $50 off your first month in Focused, the ADHD community for adults led by Kristen Carter and other life coaches. It has changed my life. So again, I'm going to list some things here at the end of the episode and if you relate to half or more of them, I urge you to go talk with an evaluation psychologist for mental health. I have a persistent feeling that my life is completely out of control. Uh, at school and at work, I try to hide the fact that I'm feeling hopelessly lost and behind. I don't invite people into my house because it's usually a mess. I forget appointments, and even when I try to remember them, I'm often late. I read the same sentence over and over again. It takes me forever to read something, even if it's important to me. I feel restless and fidgety in long meetings. Meetings are almost always too long for me. I wish I could stop interrupting people so much. Ditto for, like, blurting out. 
I spend a lot of time looking for stuff that I've lost or misplaced that I need right now, such as my wallet, keys, or other things. I've had more than my fair share of car accidents. Oh, and other accidents like tripping and falling. I have heaps of paper in my life and the heaps of bills uh, that I haven't remembered to pay and important stuff I need to do is only half of it. Like renewing my driver's license. Other stuff is just pointless papers with stuff written down that should have been done months ago but just never got to it. People sometimes tell me it looks like I'm not listening to them. When I have a big project to do, I freeze or procrastinate because I have absolutely no idea where to start. When things feel too out of control, I do something impulsive to escape or forget. I might buy things, overeat, or drink too much. I can become hyper-focused on one thing, leaving everything else undone even eating and going to the bathroom. I'm really good at setting goals, but I usually lose interest or get distracted before I have completed them. I've lost jobs because I have trouble staying organized and following through. I've had relationship conflicts over the same reasons. All this leaves me feeling anxious and depressed. As I stated before, if you relate to half or more of these, I urge you to advocate for yourself and get a full evaluation by a psychologist. That's all for now, my friends. Stay authentic. See you next time. Hey, adhd -er. I see you. Are you looking for a community of people? possibly with a fabulous leader of people with ADHD, a community in which you finally feel like you belong, because I found it. Kristen Carter created Focused. Head to my show notes to sign up for the ADHD program for adults by Kristen Carter. Head to my show notes and use that link and you'll get $50 off your first payment. You won't regret it, my friend. All right, back to the show. Hi, friend. Are you looking for a little more support for your ADHD or something else in your life that's a big struggle? You are in luck. Head to the show notes to sign up for a free one-on-one coaching call with yours truly, me. Stay authentic, friends, and go sign up.